This podcast is brought to you by Body Armor. Drinkbodyarmor.com. Get your edge. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with a boost of caffeine. Here come the John Moran. Dribbles up into some full court pressure. He's quick. Judges. Oh, and finds the defense. Going coast to coast. One man to beat. And it's the big man. Sean leaps up. Oh, and hammer. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for John Morant to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge. You're listening to EPPN's Today with DW. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday night edition of Today with DW. It is the pop culture edition with myself and Mr. Lewis Perry. What's going on, sir? What's going on? What's uh, happening? It's been like a I, long time. It seems like forever. I know. It's, it's like we can't get two weeks in a row of, <laughs> of the show to go I know. On. I, I, I know. It's we got like, going on. With it's like going a on. pandemic or something. <laughs> it's like a pandemic or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. So we got some got uh, great things to talk about today. We got a new uh, sponsor and a new segment, the Friday Five from Alternate Universe, Mr. Eric Yaku himself. Hey, they're one of my sponsors too. Yeah, well, of course Eric. they are because they are, they're also the Earplug Podcast Network sponsor as well. So there you yeah. go. Look at that. They, they do question <laughs> of the. They do question of the week. Nice, we get stupid nice. questions. I wonder who does them. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who. <laughs> I definitely wonder who. Uh, so we will be now. We haven't talked comic books here pretty much from day one, just because Lewis and I are just busy with other stuff and entertainment news. So we're going to do some uh, five top picks or the, the five picks of the week coming from Yarek Yako himself. We're going to give you a breakdown. What's going on, Mr. Rob Doe? Rob is listening from Iceland right now. He is traveling Ooh. around Iceland in a camper van. Watch out for the roads. It might be icy. <laughs> you think? <laughs> no, he's doing pretty good. He's doing it. I, okay. I'm jealous. I, that would be something I'd love to do. Uh, we're going to have him on, on on an episode when he comes back to talk about his travels and uh, some of the food that he's e eating out there. So that'll be fun. Okay. But like I said, we haven't talked much um, mm. in the last couple of weeks. And like I said, we're going to be talking comic books soon. And uh, we didn't get to talk to. I'm in an Airbnb tonight. Stop. Really? Really, Rob? Come on. You He's he's glamping. He's glamping now. <laughs> oh, okay. He's glamping. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure that's cool. I know what you got to do. Um, so we didn't talk Godzilla versus Kong uh, at all, and uh, nope. I I gave it a big thumbs up. I know a lot. Of I people loved it. Didn't, a lot of people didn't give it a big thumbs up. It, it, it's so funny at this point. It's funny how people weren't fanboys, but give fanboys crap, but they are fanboys. If you know what I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. like, give oh, me yeah. a break. I understand you write articles and you're a so-called professional, but man, you really sound like a really irritated fanboy right now. And you can't, you, you know what? You can't call others out if you're going to do the same thing. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny. It's funny. Hold, excuse me. One, one, one second. Excuse yeah, me. Go ahead. Oh, wait. Excuse me, wrong side. I'm usually on that side. Um, yes, yes, the whole yes. thing about King Kong versus Godzilla. A lot of those people that were writing that articles, I I questioned someone, and they were, and I I swear, I swear, they said there was an original. I was like, how can you review the movie or write something if you didn't even know there was an original or didn't even know there was a Mecha Con? What the well, hell are you talking off, about? I mean, it's based off one of the old black and white movies. And, no, and it was color. Scene, it, it was color. The the original uh, was color. Mm, I don't know about that. It was color. Because, yes. No, it, because no. You, what? No. Hold on. Hold on. Because the 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 black and white version with Kong throwing the tree down Godzilla's throat was taken from that movie. It's been taken from it a was couple other movies. It was not. It was black and white. And I can show you the it, YouTube video of me watching it. It's black and white. It was black and white. It was color. It was it color. Was not. Okay. I will right, prove whatever. you wrong after the after the episode because you see the tree going right in the throat and it's black and white, clear as day. Okay. There's no color about it. it Might have been made color afterwards, but original was black and white. So okay. the thing the thing is too, there were scenes taken from those original movies where obviously the tree was the axe or he took the big tree and swapped them. The other one was 
you know, everybody's like, who's going to win? You can't, he's going to kill him. I'm like, first off, th this is, these are two iconic heroes or anti-heroes. They're not villains. And if you know anything about Stan Lee and you know anything about comic books, when two heroes come together, no one dies. They, it, it's a stalemate. And Godzilla mm -hmm. goes off into the sunset into the ocean. That came from the original movie as well, which he kind of it was kind of like, "Yo, dude," gave him a nod and just took off into the ocean. That was the same scene in one in the original movie as well. So I think well, I, I thought, excuse me, excuse yeah, me, go ahead. I thought at the original movie that I remember was they rolled down the hill into the ocean together. That's how it ended. They were fighting uh, and they rolled no. down the hill. Godzilla okay. swam away at the end. He just swam away into the ocean at the end. They might have rolled down All together, right. but he did swim away at the end. Like, okay, I'm out of okay. here. See you later. You got it. And obviously, in that way, I guess who won was Kong. Kong is king. Granted, he did get the kick, you know, his butt kicked a couple times, but at the end, he won. Now, the big thing I'm hearing is, well, he wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the humans. So what? What your point? What's your point? <laughs> well, Again, Kong, what, what is your point? <laughs> well, you also have to look at it this way. Kong fought the entire movie. Godzilla yeah. ain't done nothing. He didn't fight anybody. Godzilla destroyed. Okay, the oh, only yeah. person that you know, the only thing that Godzilla fought in the movie was Kong. One yeah. A, he was shackled to a boat. Right. Okay. And then he fought Kong two other times. Kong fought other creatures plus yes, Godzilla twice. Right. So right. come on. Right. No, come, I, I, I mean, yeah. They're, they're, listen, I mean, every movie's great or every movie's good, mm -hmm. but or every movie that I like is good. But there were some there's some bad cuts. The the one thing that I wish I got to see, and I think we talked a little about this before, was I would have loved to see because we didn't two things. One, he's in a dome. I wish there was some explanation of him being in the virtual dome on the island. They didn't explain that. It just showed up. You thought he was on, on uh, Skull Island, but all of a sudden there's a giant dome. So that I wish was explained. Even if it's a five-minute explanation, I would have loved to see that. And the other thing I would have loved to see was how they sedated the hell out of him to get him on that boat. Because all of a sudden they're like, Cranberry we're going to take, the, we're, yeah, we're gonna take him to the States. Oh, well, I don't know if we can do that. All of a sudden, he's on a boat. See, I wish they did that. That's worth an extra five minutes or two minutes for me to see that. That would have been a great action scene. They probably could have used the little girl to like calm him down. I don't know how, how you're going to mm -hmm. sedate the hell out of him. I don't think you have enough sedatives for him. But I would have loved to see that. I think that would have been great storytelling. The big complaint yeah. overall, the big complaint overall is saying that the writing was horrible, that it was written by a teenager, and these human characters were horrible. Well, my, my rebuttal to that is this isn't based on the humans. The humans are totally secondary. Yes, we really didn't need Millie Bobby Brown's character really to do much, but because she was in, in, the, other, in the other movies, she was part of that movie. The movie's about mm -hmm. Godzilla, Kong, and the Titans. The movie is not based on humans. So why would you strengthen their character roles? Yes, the dialogue was mediocre, but again, the movie's focused on the Titans, not the humans. The humans are so secondary at this point. Mm -hmm. It was cool that there was a podcaster in there. I'll give you props yep. on that. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't mind that the humans were, why, why develop the human characters more? It's based on these Titan characters and the, the fighting. And the fighting scenes were great. Yes, the, the human interaction was kind of eh, but... It didn't throw me off. I, I thought I enjoyed it. I, I mean, this is something that, you know, I was like, oh, we've been waiting for years for this. And this is kind of mediocre. You, what are you, what are you waiting for? Were you waiting for mediocre fights? We didn't get mediocre fights. We got Kong versus Godzilla. That's the whole point of the damn movie. It's not about Bobby Bill and, you know, Millie Bobby Brown and the podcast are doing their things. You know, you know, the other, now people are getting nitpicky, nitpicky, uh, Nick nitpicky saying oh you pour a glass of water on the keyboard and the whole system dies that's bullshit i'm like come on everybody it's the goddamn movies we're talking about two giant titans and you're worried about because there was a glass of water on the keyboard that wouldn't have destroyed the whole system come on people <laughs> jesus it, it, it was alcohol <laughs> yeah it was alcohol <laughs> <laughs> but it, you well, know what i'm saying you know i i i, I watched I, I, I watched the whole thing the night it came out, you know, and then on top of that, I watched the last fight scene at least three or four times. I watched it mm -hmm. the next day, 
during my lunch uh, break at work because I got the right. HBO Max app on my phone. I thought it was fantastic. It was pure popcorn. Was pure, of course. Pure. What do you it, expect? It, it this isn't a Grammy. This is not a Grammy nominated movie here. <laughs> it's like <come> exactly. <laughs> you, you you know it was. It, it is what it is. It was pure fun. You know, I, shut I up, totally sit agree. down, and enjoy it. Okay. I, now, I uh, oh, Kong the pandemic, would have won. I, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was uh, to, to quote you. Kong, Kong wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the humans. Well, you know, he was there to protect the humans. That's why right. he was there. That's why they brought him from the right. dome. Exactly. To Skull Island. Now, in the in the original, my the, the one the one that I say is the original, the color version. They got him to the states by gassing him up with a whole bunch of cranberry juice. This version, <laughs> I don't know what the hell they used to know, sedate yeah. him, but he was half sedated. No, but what blew me away was Kong communicating with the little girl, knowing sign language. That oh, yeah. that was That's awesome. Cool. They couldn't yeah, get cool. any better than that. Yeah. That was really cool. That 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 yeah, hit you right thing. in the that hit you right in the feels right there. You got goosebumps yeah, when, right. he, when he started doing right that. I was like, oh shit! I was like, holy crap! Yeah, yeah that, that hit me awesome. in the Kongs. <laughs> Went right down <laughs> to my Kongs. It hit me. <laughs> um, I th I thought right it was cool, especially which. What's that? I said, right in your big toes. You mean right? <laughs> right in my big toes. Well, especially when the little girl looked at him and said, "You know, Godzilla's not the enemy." And then when she right. told him, "You be careful." It was like, right. wow. What really right. got me was when Kong busted his shoulder back into place. That was cool. I, I, was I, cool I enjoyed too. it. It was I a perfect it. popcorn movie. And you that's know, what it's I, that's what it is. It just drives me yeah. nuts. It's so it funny. Was, it's there the pandemic, to sell toys and have fun. Yeah. And, and since the pandemic, everybody's turned into a freaking negative Nelly. And it's like, whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's movies I don't like, but I still try to find some good part of them these people are just bashing everything for the sake of bashing it's just ridiculous at this point they all want to make anyway. a name for themselves that's it yes they all want to make a name so we uh to be since, since we haven't talked uh we're gonna get right in the show we're not gonna take a commercial break we'll take one in a little bit uh we're gonna go right into this uh i hope you're up to date with your uh falcon and winter soldier and i hope you're up to date with invincible <sighs> So oh, we're gonna start right off. I did, I did not watch. I did not watch this week's Invincible, but I did okay, watch. But that's okay. This week's that's okay. Winter Soldier. We won't and I don't want to say spoiling too, Invincible. All right, I don't want to say too much about Winter Soldier because Jamie and I do talk about that. I gave her homework on it, so I'll let you talk about it, and I'll just give facial no, you, reactions. No, no, you talk about it. She's not gonna listen to the show. Who cares? Um, well, I don't want your. I all right, all right. right we'll, we'll we'll see. Go go. But Let's I was go, like, all right. The so we're ugh. we're gonna do spoilers today. Look who's here. Seinfeld makes their way into Falcon and the Winter Soldier with Mary Louise Dreyfus. Now, one mm -hmm. of the better kept secrets in Marvel's history, eleven time Emmy Award winning actor Julia uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus made her surprise MCU debut as Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Uh, <laughs> say that ten times fast. So in the yeah, in in the most recent episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, merging as the potential big bad of Marvel's second TV series, according to sources close to the production, Dreyfus was slated to first appear in the Black Widow film. How cool is this? Mm -hmm. Which in pre-COVID world was scheduled to debut in uh, theaters May first, twenty twenty. But Marvel reportedly has even bigger ambitions for Dreyfus's villainous character. Now this may mean that she's still going to make her appearance in uh, um, uh, Black Widow, which I think is going to be amazing. But her her intro, it's got to be it's Madam Hydra. It's got to be. And if you haven't watched, I'm sorry. You can turn us off. Uh, spoilers. It's going to happen. We we try and we haven't done spoilers on Winter Soldier since it started. So it's just going to be what it is. Because Lewis don't get to talk much. So we're just going to spoil it. If you don't want want to, just turn it off. Rob, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you got to watch it. So I apologize for you as you're in Iceland. Um, she not may not be the exact swinging around on wires type as her character was in the comic books, but she's going to be an integral part here. Her comic book origin, uh, which has her transforming in one of uh, Italian jet sending elite to a secret agent, could explain Dreyfus's appearance in Black Widow. That is if Marvel still plans to include her. Now, I would assume they probably are, but again, they may do some re some reshoots. Maybe they got some time to do it, so who knows? Uh, she is she has trained at the same Soviet program that produced uh, Black Widow. Uh, so, and, and Falcon, uh, so this is going to be interesting to see what happens. 
Now, my question is, and this is a hypothesis, of course, is now John Walker in the comic books, obviously he, they made him turn quick, which I was, oh, I yeah. was shocked. They made it. I mean, obviously in, in the comic books though, his first portrayal was back in uh, 1986 as the super Patriot, I believe in captain America 323. Um, and he was the second super Patriot. The first one was from 1969, but that page super Patriot only appeared once and never appeared again. Then years on, and then he reappeared. 327 and then later on uh grunwald made him into the u.s agent as re he lost the title of captain america and has his own vibranium shield now my question is if you watch the episode they have access to a shield just the way she said we know you don't have the shield don't worry about it you did what you had to do are we going to see a u.s agent or are we going to see a agent hydra with a shield with the snakes on it, or is it going to be U.S. agent? He can't be U.S. agent because at this point, he, he's not going to be part it, of the West it, Coast Avengers. He's not going to be part of any government or any situation. So I'm wondering the what scene? they're going to do. Didn't you what see cut the cutscene? There what was cut a cutscene. Scene? There was the a cutscene. No, I didn't see the end of the clip scene. Yeah, there you was a the cutscene. You mean the post clip? Yeah, he was well, building the shield, and they had. To they don't put post clips on every episode, so I don't see it all the time. Uh, there was a cut scene. He's building a shield that got the star in it. All done. Well, that's stupid. Why was it shouldn't have the star in it? USA but didn't you have gotta star watch. You gotta watch. You gotta watch. He built a shield. Gonna, got with the, the clips. I don't give a shit. Well, you got to post clips. In. I don't have to. You got to. Doesn't mean anything. You got to. Doesn't mean anything. Because what happened? What happened was? What happened was? They ended it with the cliffhanger a a ending. Danny opens it up and oh, freaks out. And I was like, and after when the credits start rolling, I yelled at the TV screen and I was saying all kinds of bad words, which I'll say on the Angry Geek Show live Monday night at seven p.m. with me and that Wonder Woman, Jamie Dolan, and then. The credits start rolling, and I'm a sucker. I wait through the credits. Why? Because I fast forward the last smart. five episodes, and they didn't show. So them. You're not smart. because You're not I smart. am smart. So anyway, S M A R S M. Anyway, get on with it. Smart. Get on with anyway, it. Anyway, I'm watching, and then all of a sudden, it's kind of like Iron Man. You hear the clang, clang. So it's not going to be a, a, a uh -oh. shield. And then so watching, and there he be. is. So it's not going to be a vibranium shield? shield? I don't know, but he built it a shield, and it's got the big-ass star right in the middle, already there. See, I think that's stupid. Shouldn't have a star. Well, you got Stay closer to the comic no, books. Stay closer to the comic books. When, because when Steve Rogers was the captain, I know he that. didn't have a star. He just well, had the, the U.S. agent didn't have a star either. Nope. nope it, was, it just had the bullseye. That's pretty yeah, much what the shield was. Well, yep. there you go. You got a sneak peek. I I, I fast forward the first five episodes and with no post clip. I'm like the hell with this. Only the last, even um, WandaVision, you only yeah. got cut scenes on the last two episodes. Well, so you gotta. Hey, the I, last you know what? I moved. I moved right over to Invincible. So that's what I did. I moved over right in Invincible. I gotta watch so uh, I Invincible. If, I'm digging it. So, so I just gotta. Do we watch think we're gonna see more of a U.S. agent uniform? And I'm assuming he's gonna be working for Hydra. What well, kind of sort of you already are? It's the the cap uniform they have him wearing. But they gave him. Yeah, but they, it. it is, but they gave it back. He had to give it back. So I'm assuming he's going to wear something closer to the U.S. agent uniform. Probably, probably. Or are they going to? Or are they going to tie with, it in? Or are they going to tie it in more like when Captain America was part of Hydra just a few years ago? Maybe, maybe it's 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 quite possible that they're going to do that. Um. Because I think Sam is going to be wearing the Falcon Captain America uniform. That's what I think. That's, I think that's what the Wakanda uniform was. Yeah, that's that's what they're because if you looked at it, um, well, they've already seen that again, anyway. It got it's come me, out in the toys. Yeah, it, it got me in the Kongs because Sam's eyes started to water, and yeah. then when they cut it, I was like, "What the?" F I, I was mad. Oh God! Oh, yeah. no, no, never, I, I, never did. Cliffhanger very rarely get me, you, you know, yeah, like whatever. Pissed. But today, today yeah, I was, I was, I was like, I was pissed when the they cut it. I'm like, really? You're not going to let us even pull it up a little bit? I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. But I, I was like, damn you, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, we already saw That's the costume I mean. because it came out in the Legends lines. Thank you to our friends at Hasbro. So we already know what it's going to look like. Um, 
Well, I I haven't been what I haven't been looking at spoilers because I don't, I don't like to. Do I look that. at toys. It's so not I spoilers. Was... It's toys, dude. It's not spoilers. It's toys. Well, toys is the same thing. They spoil it. Yeah. That, unless yeah, when yeah. I go to the toy store and I buy stuff, which is all the time. Spoilers. But so and... the other the other uh, cool thing is that they brought back. They really touched on the uh, the Black Captain America, which I thought was very cool. Which is in the comic mm-hmm. books. Which is comic book heavy, true to the mm-hmm. comics. Which I thought was really cool. Um, another thing there out of all, even though there's been some political tones in the, uh, MCU, this one's really hitting close, man. This is really touching the black and white situation. What's going on currently. It's really, I I'm enjoying it, but it's kind of ballsy for a, a superhero show or any type of show really going for the politics in this and going right to the government. Um, and I'm wondering if we'll see any backlash after this. Of, of course, I'm sure we're going to see some backlash out of this episode because there's everybody bitching about something. But I thought that, that this show is doing it very, very well. And everybody's like, and you know, the thing too is I've been hearing, you know, well, I liked WandaVision better. You can't, this is like comparing pears and apples. It, they're two totally different shows. One is not better than the other. They're totally different. You, you can't, can't do compare that. It. You can't. You can't. I mean, you can if you want to, but it doesn't really mean shit. Um, but I'm really enjoying it's, the series. I'm really enjoying the series. Uh, again, uh, check that out every Friday. I think that what is there one more episode, Lewis? Yep, one think, more episode. Yeah. And the last, if they're following the same suit as, yeah, if they're following the same suit as Falcon uh, as uh, WandaVision, you're going to see a cutscene next week too. So, oh, um, WandaVision, the last two episodes had a cut cutscene. If they're following the same pattern. As uh, as WandaVision and as the Mandalorian, right, right. you're going to get yep, a cut yep. scene. So the cut. Uh, so uh, that's you know uh, that's what I'm thinking. You're you're going to get a cut scene, and then uh, uh, we're moving right on to what if after this, which is I, I can't wait. Yes, for that. I can't wait so. for the what if. I'm excited for that. So an interesting fact, if nobody or an interesting little uh, yeah, I should say fact. If you didn't know, the actor playing Captain America here, Org, is going to be the U.S. agent Wyatt Russell. Actually, was the first one to test for the captain america and the mcu before chris evans he was actually part of it was going to almost be part of the role he was the first one to do the test in the suit and everything and of course he didn't get it which i'm kind of happy because chris evans it's like putting somebody else in iron man's armor it just it doesn't work it just doesn't work i think it's it's pretty cool um but uh, i I mean yeah you know what's funny is he didn't get Captain America, but they came back to him and said, "Hey, you, you want you want to be the the copycat?" I'd be kind of pissed. <laughs> I'd be like, "Really? I wasn't good enough for the original, but you want me to put me in the copycat suit?" Oh, um, okay. I would. T- I would I probably how take many t- a- do, do you think when he first showed up with that goofy ass cowl on? Yeah. Do you think they looked at it and said, "We need to change that"? Because it did in the episodes afterwards. Yeah. They fixed yeah. that really quick. Yeah. You know, it looked like it, the first looked like he had he looked like he had no chin and a beer face. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was awful the first horrible. time. It was like, that's yeah, horrible. that's all right. Let's move on to the next awesome show that we haven't talked about yet. Invincible. Oof, I, loving it. Digging I never it. Watch, I never watched the comic book. Obviously, if uh, you're not familiar, Invincible first appeared. I never in watched it. Not- you mean I never Reddit? watched the? No, you said watched. I never watched oh, the comic either. Yeah, well, no, I never read it. it. Well, yeah, okay. Invincible first appeared in uh, as part of a Savage Dragon in one uh, number one hundred two in August two thousand two, but be for graduating his own self titled regular series in two thousand three. Now this is co created by Robert Kirkman and Ryan Otley from Image Comics. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is not for your kids. This is. Ooh. This is almost to the point where don't let your kids sit and watch any of the Justice League cartoon animated series at this point. This is probably (laughs) five times more bloodier, if not 10 times more bloodier. They're swearing. There's no sex, but there's a lot of talk about sex. So this is definitely an adult cartoon made for adults. The book was high mature content. I never read the book. And I don't know why I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of The Walking Dead when it came out. I know. I'm sorry. I wasn't a big fan of Robert Kirkman's work on Marvel uh, Marvel Zombies either. And on top of the fact that he is, seems like a nice guy, but when I met him, he must have been in a mad mood and it just set me off. And he just shrugged me off. And that just set me off on the whole tangent where, like, screw you. 
but I, I forgive you, Kirkman, but it's all good. But going into this, I was kind of skeptical about watching this cartoon. I'm like, I don't know the background of the book, which is fine sometimes because I didn't know the background of The Walking Dead. And I love the TV series uh, for the first five or six seasons. Um, but I love this. Com I love this cartoon. I think it's it's well done. Uh, you are, you, you even have some of the walking dead in there. Steven Young, mm -hmm. who is, uh, in walking dead, who got killed with the baseball bat plays the lead character, Mark Grayson. And every time I hear Grayson, I'm like, is there a dick? Where's a dick? Dick. Dick. Yeah. Robin. Then he kind of drawn there? like Dick Grayson. Yeah. He's, you know, he's kind of shit, right? <laughs> yeah. He totally. Well, I, I downloaded, uh, volume one of Invincible on my Comixology, Comixology Unlimited. Not that yep. we're endorsed, nor is the Angry Geek. So I'm not pushing their product. I, hear I it. just no free it. advertising here. No, no free advertising. I just have it. Um, I download it, but I do not want to read it because I'm enjoying this mm. series. Okay. Mm. Maybe when season one is done, I'll do like I did with the boys. Once season right. one is done, I'll go back and I'll start reading it just to, uh, you know, hold me over until season two comes out. Right. I am digging. I am digging the yeah. comparisons of Hellboy and Etrigan with the demon mm -hmm. in this show. I am digging the Justice League with the Defenders of the Galaxy. Yep. I am just, uh, you know, the Teen Titans with Teen Teen. I am yep. digging the comparisons, okay? Red it's Tornado total, with total, Robot. It's a total parody. It's not a yes, ripoff. It, it's a parody. And an Omega Man mm -hmm. with Superman. I was like, oh my god. I am so digging this cartoon. And it's it's it's, it's badass, okay? And especially, you, you know, Invincible's father, when it's like, you know, there's a dragon attacking. I'm on my day off. I'm like, wow, <laughs> yeah, what exactly. the hell? He's yeah, and <laughs> very much. Omni-Man, thank you, Rob. I, I said Omega Man. I know that yes, once it, it came out of my mouth, now, once it came not, out of my not, mouth, I was like, oh. What, wasn't that Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Omega, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But thank you, Rob. I really appreciate you, the, the correction. Um, I don't want to read the books, not yet, because right. I, I don't want to I don't want to wreck anything, but I'm digging it. And I also love how when they somebody says Invincible's name, the logo flashes across the screen uh, with yeah, the I blood. You I, don't you don't say his I, name, I, I, it I, just I, pops up. You're bam, and then it shows up. I like that. Yeah, I, I'm, is, I'm, I'm digging it. I, and I know you didn't watch this week's episode, so this is not a spoiler, but kind of a spoiler. I won't get into details. The only thing I found so far in this episode is in the in the last two episodes, or not the last episode, the, before that, he's invincible. There's no question about it. All of a sudden, last week's episode, he seems like it's just, what the hell's going on? What happened to your powers? It's almost like he just got mm -hmm. defeated so quick. Same thing in this kind of episode. So I'm wondering what's going on, if they're going to touch on that, because he seemed really super powerful in the, in the first couple of episodes. And these last two, he's been struggling. Um, I won't go any more into it. The, the, what I want to I want to know more about the dude that beat his ass because that oh, character the lion? Was, yes the lion that yeah. character is that character is badass I mean why are you he looking took up? him to the woods oh, because that's oh, where you are you're, you're up I got you yeah, yeah I'm looking got up you. at you that's rude if I'm not if I'm looking over there I'm looking at you're, you're, I'm looking at you you're, you're, right, you're so looking, looking at my Kongs right hey listen you're looking at my Kongs okay I'm looking at the camera anyway that lion dude took him to the woodshed. And oh wow, oh, and I yeah so, that's so for people. Who I, I, don't... I love it's it's very. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, that's but fine. it's very. It, it brings me back to the early issues of Spider Man when the crap was good. You know, of right. Peter Parker struggling with MJ and Gwen Stacy. Right. Oh, should I tell him? Should I not tell him? Should I tell him? Should I not tell him? This, right. Because this is what what Grayson's deal, what Mark Grayson's dealing with with his girlfriend. Right. You know, and then of course yep. he he has uh, Adam Eve and he's talking to her. Well, should I tell? Do I not tell? I'm digging it. This show is absolutely off it. the hook. I man. love it. Um, how many episodes don't know are, are we? Uh, Rob, how many episodes? This Rob! is episode six. This is episode six. Okay, I'm asking Rob. He in Greenland. Rob, how many episodes <laughs> are there? Uh, so if he people knows. aren't aware, if people aren't aware, 
of the show, the, ba the basic breakdown is Mark Grayson is a teenage superhero, Invincible. He was a normal high school senior with a normal part-time job and an otherwise normal life. Six. Who's that sound like? Who's that? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, okay. So uh, sounds like Peter Parker. Uh, except his father, yeah, Nolan, is a, super, is a superhero Omni-Man, the most powerful superhero on the planet, which, by the way, he's an alien. At the age of 17, Mark begins to display superpowers, which come from his father being a member of the Voltamite race. Uh, who, according to Nolan, pioneered the galaxy and a mission of benevolence and enlightenment. As inv Invincible, Mark begins working as a superhero with his father, acting as mentor and meeting up uh, with other heroes. Mark uh, w w does occasionally work with a superhero team called the Teen Team, as uh, Lewis said earlier, consisting of Robot, Rex, Plode, Duplicate, and Adam and Adam uh, Adam Adam Eve. Um, again, uh, J.K. Simmons plays uh, Mark's uh, father, uh, Nolan Grayson, as well as Omni Man. I think it's amazing what they do. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know the history, but there's some shady shit going on, and I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the dad doesn't turn out to be the douchebag that he is right now. <laughs> let's let's just put it that way. I, 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 really I don't know. Sure. I, I think it's going. And don't. I, and if anybody be, knows, don't spoil it for either one of us. I don't want to know. That's, that's right? another reason why I don't want to read the book. Because I, I, you right. know, I don't, I don't want to read the book and go. Damn, this book is so. Yeah. I ain't watching the TV show because that shit sucks. I'm reading this book. The book is so much better. <laughs> I don't want that to happen because when I read The Boys after I watched season one and I went yeah. back and read The Boys, I was like, well, the characters look better on the screen than they do in the book, but the book was so much better. And I was like, usually, damn. The books, usually, the books usually they are better, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. know. Somebody, I know, but. I don't, Animated though, I think we obviously they're going to look just as good, if not better, as the comic books. It's not real life, so you can get away with that. Yeah, yeah, no, um, no, I, I get that, but I, I just don't want anything to be wrecked, you know. No, so I, I don't I want to. Yeah, I, I no, 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 no. I, I like to be I surprised every week. I like to be surprised every week. I do, I do. So I, you know, I, I'm. Everybody was asking me, uh, um, what would be my. Uh, what, how many DWs I would give it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I can't at this point. I have to wait for the rest of the season. I did that with WandaVision. I'm doing it for winter, you know, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I have to wait till the end of the season. I can't go into it with three episodes in and then be like, oh, this is a four. And then I'm like, oh, shit, by the end, it, wow, it might be a nine. So I'm just going to wait till the end. You guys will get my DW score uh, at the end of both series. Uh, what if I'm excited for as well? Another animated series. Mm -hmm. can, D can finally Marvel keep up with DC's animated universe. Did it take them to have their own streaming service and think big screen to do this? We're going to find out because their DC, they're animated on TV and straight to DVD is horrible. They're animated. It's just horrible. Uh, hopefully they sink some good stuff into it. Uh, we're going to see T'Challa again. I'm wondering, do you think it's, if it's him, do you the think it's acted? Yeah. Do you think if, do you think it's a uh, Bozeman? Do you think it's Bozeman acting as a, T'Challa? T'Challa. Yeah, whatever. T'Challa, T'Challa. Tomato, tomato. Same thing. I don't know. I thought you were just talking about some kind of Mexican food. Um, I don't know. I, he did do a voice, they said, I thought. I thought he did do a voice. I, nice I, I don't know. Black, I, didn't, I didn't see. I didn't um, read the IMDb credits, so I'm not sure. I like to kind of keep some of that kind of secret, but I'll have to check Black, that out now. Black that Panther, I, I, I'm going to go on record. Black Panther, Black, uh, Black Panther 2 is going to be heartbreaking. Because we're not going to oh, yeah. get that again, you know, and, and we're we're not just like Heath Ledger's Dark Knight. You're never going to get that again. It's heartbreaking. You're never no, going to get agree. that Joker again, you know, and it, it's just heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking performance because no matter who is going to put on that suit and become the Black Panther, you're not going to get that performance right, that we right, fell yeah. in love with okay you're, you're People are writing a petition I'm, to recast them and i'm like i don't know about that oh, okay well we have to that's fine we have to recast him we know that okay if we want why, black panther why? change two, the universe why change the universe we got a girl playing iron man put a girl in this in the suit yeah okay i i get what you're saying but if they're going to keep it within the timeline, but how can they recast them? All the, the Killmonger burnt up all the flowers. Yeah. They can't get them. Okay. Yeah. You can't. So if they're going to stay with the timeline, if you're going to stay with the timeline, they can't do that. Uh, how do you know that the timeline? The, 
What's up, Timmy? Uh, Timeline's different now. Oh, yeah, you know, it could have changed snap. because yeah, of the snap. True. It could have changed. Could have yeah, changed. Yeah, that's true. That, that's true. But what I'm saying is, you know, you loves all their stupid time travel and alternate reality stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. But what I'm saying is, you no matter what happens, yes, people are saying, oh, recast, recast, recast. Okay, if if they recast them, we're not going to get the same. Okay, no. I, that's why what I think they should make it a woman. I, that's why I think they should make it a woman. You're not because whoever steps in his shoes, who it's just like Robert Downey Jr. You anybody who's a man is stepping in Iron Man's shoes. You, you're there's no comparison. You just you might as well not even try out for that role because it's not going to happen. It's just not. I mean, Un unless they <laughs> knock it out of the park with. I mean, it happened with Michael Keaton, okay, and every Batman that came after him up until Ben Affleck, okay, so. It's going to be the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Now, even with Christian Bale, when, when Christian Bale was first cast, I don't want the newsy guy. I don't want a newsy kid as Batman. That's what everyone said. Then they picked on his voice and they did this, yeah. did this. But then you also had that generation that's like, Christian Bale is my Batman. You're going to have the same Every generation is going to have Every generation is going to have their own yeah. Batman. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's just with the Black Panther, it's going to be. They can't have Killmonger take the mantle because he died too. So no, they they can't do that. Did we see? They, his body? they can't. Did yes, the whole Lion that? King, the whole Lion King thing. Remember all the delight that the, the they they can't they they can't. Hey, hey really? They, what happens in the Marvel hard. universe? Nobody stays dead. Hello. Nobody stays dead in the Marvel universe. Okay. I, I i i get know. you but still i get you but still nobody stays dead in the marvel you <laughs> it's a good call maybe that that's, yeah, those are rumors those are rumors rob uh to chill i said he had the tech to save him at the end and that's true to, like i said marvel universe nobody stays dead it's really true you never know and who knows we might even see a cgi like they did with uh, carrie fisher there, we could see a cgi of him in the beginning or something to show how he passed away yeah, well, who knows? It very well could happen. I don't know. They might do it out of honor and respect for him and give him one more chance on the screen. You know, one more showing. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, again, I don't that, know. that it's movie's going to be a tearjerker. It's going to be a tough one. I would not want to be the writer or the director or the producer of that film because that's going to be damn tough. It's going to be very tough. I mean, th they would be stupid to have a one and done. Yes, I agree. Um, and they would be stupid to not have a sequel it, it's just it, it's it's touchy it's a very yeah. touchy situation on what to do with the black mm -hmm. panther it i mean an iconic character um one of jack kirby's greatest creations mm -hmm. and it, it's 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 just you you can't you you just can't right. okay no, it, it's I just agree. what do you do you know, it, it's it's just one of those one they of those things. They got big shoes to fill. They got big shoes to fill. I know yeah. it'll probably be one of Marvel's biggest blockbusters because everybody wants to see what's going on. Even if the movie does actually suck, the first weekend's ticket sales would be crazy, even during COVID or when, if yeah. we have COVID at that point. But still, hopefully that's a few years down the road. Then we won't have to worry about it. But uh, well, it's, it's just one of those. It's just one of those so, things where you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, but we'll never totally know agree. until it happens, and it, it's it's going to be heartbreaking no matter what. I hear you. On that bombshell, we're going to take a break and listen to one of our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to do the Hasbro Minute. we got a new Iron Man wave coming out from Legends. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to do the brand new segment brought to you by Alternate Universe, the Friday Five. Eric Yako takes his picks, or we all take our picks in a way, of the five uh, books that we, uh, we highlight that are shipped on this past Wednesday. And then if we have some time, we're going to get into uh, Lewis's flea market finds and see what he brought, uh, brought with us. All that and more. Don't go anywhere. Get your drinks. Rob, stay warm. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with a boost of caffeine. Kyler Murray drops back, looks downfield. Here comes the blitz. Murray finds an opening. And oh, sideline dies and he misses. He's got daylight. Murray sprinting, picking up speed. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for Kyler Murray to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge.
Welcome back, everybody. It's the Friday Night Edition today with DW, with myself, Mr. Lewis Perry from the Angry Geeks. It is the Pop Culture Edition. Thank you for joining us on this Friday night. Again, we can probably say we're, we can probably say we're the only podcast being listened to from someone in Iceland. <laughs> Live. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was silence there. I was drinking. What my time body is it? The- what time is it in Iceland, Rob? I think what, what time is it? I want to know. Be, I'm curious. Yeah, they may be way ahead of us. All right. I know. Is it like tomorrow? <laughs> it's not. I'll Come on. <laughs> I, wa- <laughs> well, I, I want to know what time it is. Oh, my. Is God. there sheep on the road? I'm curious. Oh, my God. You, 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 text Rob later after the show. <laughs> I'm not texting him. He can answer this. Put his comment up there. He oh can like God. he can be like reporting. This is Rob live from Iceland. There are sheep on the road. And I just want to <laughs> know. Been. All right. Uh, 11, 11, 11 p.m. Look at go to bed, you dumb bastard. It's late. <laughs> See? <laughs> All, right. All right, everyone. Uh, we are going to take a look at uh, this next our Hasbro Minute. Thanks to our sponsors at Hasbro. They have a brand new line coming out right now. It's going to be the Iron Man. Build your Iron Man collection with the new Marvel Legends Iron Man Wave available for pre-order now over at on Hasbro Pulse. So we're going to take a quick uh, pop and look over there is some of the, the video that they got here. <laughs> Ooh, the old drum is cool. Dark Star. Ooh. How cool is that? Not bad. Cool I, 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 yeah, I'm digging the Iron Man. I'll, I'll get me one of those. And the dark star for sure. I'm digging. I'm digging that. And the so we're gonna the Ultron for sure. Here. So we're gonna be looking at this. This is the Marvel Legends line that's coming up. So what uh, we have something now. Uh, they didn't show Thor. It's part of the series that's coming out. He's already sold out. Uh, dark star. Now the the sale is funny. They're about twenty two ninety nine, which is not bad for Marvel Legends. They're very. Uh, Excuse me. Very I got detailed. The eye. Very, Excuse eye me. Of I got the eye on pre- yeah, I got that on pre-order. That might show up to the studio. We also, uh, the other one that sold out was Ironheart, who is the female Iron Man. Uh, the Marvel Legends series Ultron as well. We also have a Legends series Hologram Iron Man, as well as Marvel Legends Stealth Iron Man, which I believe the helmet does come off, if you saw that in the commercial. And then mm-hmm. we have the Guardsman. And then series modular Iron Man. So that's going to be pretty cool for that series. And obviously we'll scroll down to see a couple of the other ones. But right now we're focusing on the Iron Man wave. These are all for pre-order. There wasn't an exact date of when they're coming out. Um, but again, Hasbro has been, I, I love the Legends line of all the other, all the Hasbro toys that I, that they put out there as far as action figures. Uh, you, you're looking the wrong way. Oh, yes, you are. Which one you want? Which one you want? No, I'm, I'm pointing to the ones I have on the geek layer on the wall. Oh, that's, gotcha. That's what I'm pointing uh, So I have the Legends. I have the Legends. Uh, what am I looking at over here? I have the Legends uh, Juggernaut, The Thing, Abomination, uh, Abomination, uh, Doctor Strange, Hawkeye, and who's over in the corner? Uh, oh, Rhino. So Did you uh, Silver Surfer? Did you find a I Surfer didn't... Chase? I did not find that, no. Oh, I wish I knew that because I came across it. That's a Walgreens exclusive. Now, I oh, got yeah. one. And it comes with Monier. Um, and I came across two at another Walgreens. And if I Ooh. if I come across one, I'll, I'll pick it up and send it your nice. way. Um, nice. But yeah, I got Thunderstrike. Nice. I got two Weapon Xs. I got the Iron Man in the um, silver and red uh, uh, armor. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that, there's your Hasbro Minute. Like You can go over to Hasbro.com or over at Hasbro Pulse. Follow them on Instagram. They have some great toys out there. Even uh, that, like I said, they they sent me the two Infinity Gauntlets, uh, the Iron Man one. I am Iron Man, and obviously uh, the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos. Uh, we'll see what else more, what else we, what more we can get from, or what they're going to send me soon uh, from Hasbro. Again, thank you Hasbro for uh, 
being an advertiser on our show, a sponsor. So we're going to get in and I got to do a segment. I might uh, do a little musical intro segment here for this very new segment that we're going to be doing each week. I've been talking with a good friend, Eric Yako from Alternate Universe, good friend of the families, um, good friend with the Angry Geeks, just, just a good guy. We're talking about what we could do more for the show and what we could do on the show because we haven't really talked a lot about comic books. So where it came up with Eric and I came up with the idea of Friday Five. It's the five picks of the week that'll be shipped out, and you can get these through Alternate Universe. You can call and have him ship them from you. They are this. They are sponsoring our show. Um, if you have a hard time finding anything, we'll give you the contact information. Alternate Universe can help you out no matter where you are in the United States. Eric is a great guy. He will do whatever he can to get you what you need. So we're gonna start right off with dun, 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 dun. what do we got here? Uh, we have. The first one up is Jules Verne Lighthouse Number 1. Now, Image Comics is really doing some great stuff again. They're almost doing a 90s resurgence with some of the things they're going. There is rumor that I heard yesterday from a f other podcast, well-known podcast. Uh, it, its initials are ISC, and I'll let you guys figure that out afterwards. Rumors are, now these are straight rumors, that somebody big from D.C., is going back now listen going back to image now do you know who works at dc now who was at image ever i don't need to ask lewis that because i think he already knows mr jim lee is possibly going back to that's image what Comics. i was gonna say that was my answer <laughs> well i wasn't asking you i, I was asking our our listeners <laughs> i already knew you I already knew you knew. Um, I don't know if that would be the best move. What the hell is he going to do at this point? I mean, he is one of the big CEOs up there, CEOs up there. I think, personally, before we get into Jules Verne's Lighthouse, I think his best move would be, what was the number one, what's the number one best-selling comic book in the world? I'm asking you now, Lewis. Oh, probably Batman. No, it's X Men number one. Jim Lee's X Men number one is still the oh. highest. Most oh, I thought you're talking about. I I know. No, I I thought you meant like coming off the shelves. Oh no! Not, well, it was coming off no. the shelves. No, <laughs> it did come off no, the shelves. No, 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 no. That's not. That's all right, I should have no, said no. of all time. I'm sorry. I should have said of yes. all time. Anyway, yeah. So oh, X Men number be, one. All oh, eleven great? covers. Wouldn't it be? Yeah, I, I think I have them. All. <laughs> what? Wouldn't it be great for him to go over and do X Men number one with uh, what's his name? Is it is it Bendis? I think it might be Bendis is writing it. Uh, to start that again, how cool would that be with their new X Men line? That would be amazing. That would be cool. But let's get right into the the our Friday Five Jules Verne Lighthouse number one from Image Comics. A little background here: at the edge of the galaxy, there is a giant supercomputer known as the Lighthouse. The only brain powerful enough to navigate ships through a sargos of naturally occurring wormholes, potentially cutting months or even years off a spaceship's journey. Three hu humans, one alien, and an and a nanny bot have manned the remote station for years in a relative peace until the arrival of Captain Congre. Congro? Congre. And his band of cutthroat pirates threatens the future of civilization and reveals that each of the lighthouse crew has been hiding a shocking secret. He who controls the lighthouse controls this part of the galaxy. Uh, the team that brought you the marked in Sonata comes to this double side sci-fi thrill set on the high seas of space based on the work of master storyteller Jules Verne. I'm digging this. I mean, right now, right off the bat, I'm digging just the cover alone. I'm digging it. Uh, a great take on Jules Verne's uh, sci-fi version of Jules Verne's. I think it's a great take and uh, you can get that uh, alternate universe. Uh, I believe you can, per I'm not sure if you can purchase online, but I know you can contact him and email him and he, I'm nope. sure he'll speak it out. You could contact you know? Eric for any of these, or you can make the trip to Milford or New Haven. Now yep. both well, are we'll give the address, to get we'll, to. Yeah. We'll yep. give the address at the end. Okay. I have the addresses at the end. Uh, next up. Oh. There you go, brother. All right. Here's your yeah. Batman, Batman detective number one. Now these are all number ones. It looks like here. Uh, an epic tale begins that will take on a harrowing, action-packed European adventure in a new miniseries by superstar creators Tom Taylor and the man, the myth himself, Andy Kubert. A horrific tragedy in the United Kingdom sends a very personal and deadly message to the Dark Knight, one that will draw Batman of Gotham City to investigate. From the moment he lands in Europe, Batman will face a difficult investigation unheard adversaries to find the assistance of a partner once more. 
uh, all in the hunt for the villain known as Equilibrium. Hmm. New villains, new allies. Hmm. Thrilling overseas adventures begin for the Dark Knight, starting with an extra size 26 page debut story. Ah, uh, I love the cover itself. Again, Andy Kubert, awesome stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I might just have to get this one myself. I've been out of the Batman game for a while. I that might definitely have to get this one. Next up. Awesome cover. Now, now, I will say that now, now, now this is a pick. Now we all, now I can hear, I can hear people whoa, out whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. I can hear this out there <laughs> because the original Dark Hawk did not do very well, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, wow they, they, that's why i was that, yeah that's why my, my, my reaction was like i was yeah. gonna have to call the boss up and say what the hell are you doing <laughs> eric what what celebrating I ready to reach to the phone <laughs> celebrating the 30th anniversary of the 90s heroes hero in a three spectacular stories first an untold story from dark Hawk, dark hawks early days by creators danny fignoth and mike manley then explore the wing heroes cosmic years by dan eller and andre devito and finally out Find out what the future holds for Dark Hawk by Kyle Higgins and more. So these are three stories in one. This is awesome. Uh, I do know that the action figure did pretty well. I mean, it was a they didn't get as many. Uh, how do I say that many were produced as as other lines are? You know, you, let's say you produce a thousand Iron Man, you might only produce five hundred. I'm just making up numbers uh, for an example. Um, but I think I might have had this dark hawk in the beginning. I thought it was cool, and after a while, I didn't think it was that great. But I'm intrigued that they're bringing it back. There's a reason they're bringing them back for something. So maybe they're gonna do a nice retelling of some stories and maybe bring them back into the into the current uh, scene. Uh, next up, we're gonna go whip, 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 whip. Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider's Shadow. No, Dude, the covers on these, the the variants look amazing. That's all yes. I got to say. Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow, what if Peter Parker became Venom? Peter Parker once put on an alien suit that nearly destroyed his life. Well, did it really? I mean, he did do pretty good with that for a while. But what if he never take, had taken it off, ignoring every warning? And as Spidey embraces the dark symbiote, haunted by a terrible nightmares and exhausted by an endless barrage of bad guys, Peter can't seem to catch breaks these days. So when the Hobgoblin attacks, he finds a hero at the end of his rope and vulnerable to new dark impulses. Spider-Man is about to change his rules but it's but is it truly Peter who is in charge? Creative powerhouses Chip Zdarsky, Pesco Fairley, and Matt Hogsworth will bring you a terrifying tale of Peter Parker possessed and on the edge. Bringing back the what if storylines, I'm laundering this. Oh, I don't know if they will. If I they bring him back to the Shi'ar origins, that that is I would well. Let's go back to that, Rob, because that's a good point. Because we're talking about Hark. He's got. He's got the he's got a shard in his hand, so that could be that could very well. Maybe could Starhawk be will show up. Maybe yeah. Starhawk will show up. Oh, this may maybe. And lastly, uh, I'm I want what if to come back. We were talking about what if, but the what if we we're talking about is the TV series. I want what if to yeah. come back. I'm on a what if kick. So any what ifs you find, whoops, uh, we're missing one. Here. That's not we're it. Missing. No, that's not it. It didn't pop up. Okay, so we don't have the image for that one. Which one is it? Well, I'm now I'm really upset about that. So we're going to go on to the last one. Canto in the City of Giants, which is from IDW Publishing. They always put out some great books. I've always loved their, mm -hmm. their merchandising, their marketing strategies with IDW. They've always done some great stuff. Uh, them, them and Dark Horse. Uh, Canto has surprised, has surprised, delighted, and moved readers with tales of the clockwork hero fighting for love, his people, and hope. In this special Canto series, our titular, 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 Titty, our titty hero, our titular hero, <laughs> <laughs> with the giant guardians of Disfra and Ba, as well as our other friends and foes, to recruit the kingdom of giants to to his quest to defeat the Shrouded Man. Canto co-creator David M. Bauer and artist Shabazzin Fritz from Headspace and Disaster Inc. and Bri Bridge Canto to the Hollow Man in the upcoming Canto Three. So there you have it. That is brought to you by Alternate Universe. And as Lewis was saying in the beginning, uh, you can visit two of their locations, one in New Haven, Connecticut at 1181 Chapel Sheet Street. You can call them at 203-562-0108. Uh, and you can email them at, at ALTUN96 at AOL. Or their other shop would be at Midford, Milford, Connecticut, 398 Milford. Bridgeport, Milford, Connecticut, 398 Bridge, Bridgeport Avenue, 203 876 8539. And you can email them at altun05 at aol.com. What is it with you guys in aol.coms? Well, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something about Gmails. the Milford store. 
Hold on one second. Alternate Universe Milford, Connecticut is the official home of the Angry Geek Show. When you get off that highway, you're going to make that left and you're going to go down. Not even two seconds. You're going to make that other. You're going to make that right. And boom, it's right there. You can't miss it. It is one of the greatest comic book shops that you can ever walk into I still gotta, your I still entire make life. I still got to make yeah, it there. It is. It is the you official home make it of up the here. Angry Geek. It's about time you guys True. can make it up here. You and Eric got to make it up here. Yep. Yeah. We 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 talk about that all the time. Eric's been in the yeah. geek layer. Have you? No. Nope. Yeah. yeah. No. Have you been in the studio? No. And there you go. Let's see. There you go. All right. As we <laughs> end up, uh, as we as we finalize, is the Hulk going to smash through that brick wall right there? Because that would be kind of cool, Lewis. Oh, I could do that. I could. I can do that. <laughs> I knew but... you could do that. <laughs> uh, my green, my, my green, my green, my green screen's coming in next week. So hopefully we'll I'll be able to do some cool stuff with our for our sponsors and whatnot. But anyway, we're gonna find we're gonna end this show with a very quick uh, flea market finds or some tips of what you got going on this week. Or you know, and if you didn't do any finds uh, as far as flea market tips, can we talk? Uh, maybe let's talk quick because uh, I know you got things to do right sure. after. Let's talk about flea market finds and speculations. Now, right okay. off the bat, now. Can I can I start that, or no? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Go. So I'm, okay, I'm for people that go for people who don't know what speculating means, it's in the world of collecting. Whether it's toys, it could be baseball cards as well, depending on what's going on. But we're mainly concerned and talking about comics. So basically, spec speculators, myself sometimes will buy a book if there's a major character coming out to give you an idea what speculators were doing with the last Wandavision. Obviously, the first appearance of Vision went up. The the so 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 limited issue run of Wanda and Vision went up, uh, and as well as when rumors first started before the series came out, or right when Episode One came out, there was rumors of Wonder Man, who is uh, Simon Williams, who's technically a brother of the Vision because they use Simon Williams' brain patterns to make the Vision. His book went up. Thank God, I already have that book. But that went up. Those are speculations right there where people will try to speculate. Let's say um, here, here's a good one for you. And then I'll let Lewis go. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. There's two rumors coming out of this, out of the Guardians of the Galaxy and going into Phase 4. One, Silver Surfer will be showing up. Uh, I'm sorry. No, not Silver Surfer. I'm sorry. Beta Ray will be showing up. That's going to be mm -hmm. huge. I have two copies of that. That's Walt Simonson, uh, Thor. Um, so speculators are already buying that book. It's already going up. Number two... The other one that's been speculated since Guardians 1 was Adam Warlock or him, the first appearance. Now, I had the first appearance of him as well. All those books are skyrocketing up because once the movie comes out, people are going to want to buy them. Now, sometimes you, you, if you're smart, you, you, get it, uh, you get it quick. If you don't want to flip, you get a book. It raises in value. Awesome. Makes you warm in the heart. If you want to flip it, flip it. Uh, take it away with Lewis as far as now I'm sure with flea market finds as a, as a collector and sometimes a speculator, you look for these right at the flea. I mean, that's it's, this is your bread and butter kind of thing where you go. Yep. Yeah. This, the, the hardest part is, is you can go to, you know, you search, I, I call them hunts. Uh, okay. Haunts. Mm -hmm. When I go on a hunt, you know, I can tell people hey, I'm going hunting. My family knows it's not out there killing animals or killing people or kill. When I go out and hunt, they know I'm going to tag sales. I'm going to flea markets. I'm going to antique shops. So when I go out there, yeah, I do look at the speculate. I, I look at the dirt sheets. You know, I pull up my app. I got a couple apps on my phone and I look at the, the, the key collector and I look at this and I look at that and I see what they're saying. Oh, this is speculating. This is speculating. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Like Transformers number one, that was a dollar bin book. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now it's like up there, like, hundreds of dollars why right, right. it's because people are speculating right. so if you are lucky if you go to your same haunts over and over and over again a lot of these vendors they forget what they put in their box so they can have a 10 cent box they, they put in their bo box a dollar book 25 uh, cents a book whatever right. is in these boxes keep that in the back of your mind when you're out there hunting okay if you see something that you people are speculating you're looking online you're in a comic book uh group or you're in a collector's group and you see people looking for this book and you're not out there myself i'm a hoarder i'm a collector i don't 
collect to sell. I don't collect to flip. But if I see somebody looking for something, I'm like, you know, I know where a copy of that book is. Let me go see if I can find it. I'll go back to where it is because I retain the stupid. I Don't ask me what my wife's phone number is, but <laughs> I tell you what, where I found this certain book for a buck was. Right. Remember, because you can go back there and a dollar to a donut, that book will still be there because no one else will remember it's there. You go back there. Oh, here it is. Uh, G.I. Joe number 52. Hey, here you go. The right. first appearance of Joe Schmo. Hey, that book is going to go up. Always well, remember you, where you see something. Well, you, you did that for me, for someone who got me. It was supposed to be a Christmas present, but it got delayed and delayed and delayed. But you did you did that for a friend of mine who who got me got me Alpha Flight number one. So correct. That book was, I mean, yeah, it was a it's a key issue. It's Alpha Flight number one. It was never really that expensive. And now speculators are like going through the roof with it. And there you go. It's it's progressively going up in value. A lot of the Alpha Flights are going up in value. Mm -hmm. I built that whole entire run. On ten cents a piece, mm. because yeah, are, you just think, have to know I, how to go hunting. I think the ones I got for were twenty five cents to fifty cents about a few years ago. Yeah. I still need a bunch more, but like the first now, appearance of the first appearance of Vindicator was at X Men. Shit, I have it too. I want to say one twenty nine, but that's not right. Um, I I got that, and I believe you know who I got that from. I got that from Michael Zapsit. From the secret stash <laughs> down in Red yep. Bank, New Jersey. I got that. No, you 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 really have to when you go, if you have a hunch, follow your hunches. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like, as I said this before, don't don't act too giddy. Um right. the boss came with me, Eric Yako. Um, he came to a couple of my haunts, and um, I do have a, a relationship with a vendor at one of these where I buy some of his stock. Because he goes out and he buys storage units. He right. doesn't know how to unload the comics, so he calls me. Eric bought for the store, for Milford, the Angry Geek's home, he bought a stack of Thor comics. And they were 7 to $10 books. And he bought them all for, I think it was $0.50 cents to a dollar a piece. Right. Right. And Eric just looked at me. I'm like, go right ahead. I already got all them. You just buy them. Yeah, go ahead and take them. And yeah, you just keep your composure. Right. Just keep oh your God. composure when you're looking and don't and don't be all giddy. Don't don't be all cocky or whatever, because then the people are gonna know. And right. Eric does always make a you know a, a joke about me. Somebody's eating cat food tonight, but hey, <laughs> all fair loving comics. Cat food and ramen noodles. <laughs> Cat food and ramen noodles. Yes. Yes. But always keep your eye out, man. I mean, always keep your eye out because you never know what you're, you're going to find. Um, someone's trash is someone else's treasure. You just sure. got to keep in mind. Keep, keep oh, that definitely. in mind for sure. Um, I did have something that I picked up, not last yeah. weekend because it was WrestleMania weekend, but the weekend before. Uh, but the lights and the cameras are in the way. Okay. I actually picked up. Uh, the original Falcon miniseries where Falcon Ooh, nice. went one on one. When Falcon went one on one with the Sentinel, one on one with Electro, and saved Captain America. And oh, yeah. one of the most racist lines of all time. <laughs> do you oh, do you know was, what line I'm talking? I about? don't. I I vaguely remember, but there's so many racist lines back then in those comic books. It didn't really, it didn't really. Matter. Oh my god! And there is such a racist line in this comic. Um, uh, the bat the comic has not yet been bagged and reborn, but I bought the complete series, the all four issues, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, I play I, I played I paid four bucks for four issues. Nice, can't beat that. No, you definitely cannot, not. Definitely not. Plus, on top of that, and I got the iconic, the iconic X Men cover of Wolverine, Captain America. Oh yeah, I and have Black, Black Widow. Widow. I sent you the picture of it. Yep, I paid twenty five cents for that comic, all at the same flea market. Okay, that, now that DW, awesome. I, I sent, I sent you the picture yes, of that comic, if you remember right. Okay, I sent you the picture of that, and I was just absolutely I was like, Poof, here you go. Um, 
in that comic, now please forgive me, but I, I, I still remember this from back in the day when I originally That's a read Jim this Lee, right? That's drug. Jim Lee, right? That's the Jim Lee cover. Yeah. yeah. It's one of his last X-Men covers, I think. And mm -hmm. it's such an iconic cover because Captain America is such beautifully drawn on this cover. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing spectacular in that book. It's not a key issue, but it's a key cover. Now, right. when you're out there and you're hunting for comics, you got to understand you have key issues. Key issues is something that happens inside there. Either it's a first appearance of a character, of a character, a key spot of a story that is your key issue mm -hmm. then you have a key cover a key cover can be a variant cover a key a uh, first appearance of a character on a cover something special about a cover that's the difference you have a key issue mm -hmm. key cover this x-men comic that we are talking about i don't know if you could pull the cover up i did send it through you through facebook messenger last week when i picked it up it is a key cover and that's what makes this book so hot. So the you have your flea, you, you you have your people that will go on eBay that put their stuffs up in you know flea market or in a tag sale. They don't see, oh my god, this book has no value. Uh, ten cents. They don't know it's a key cover. Okay, right. And that makes that book value. They'll just oh well, this is a first appearance of Star Lord. Oh. Okay, even though the the spine could be ratty, oh, it says here it's worth three hundred dollars. Let's put three hundred dollars. I don't. Well, it's only worth seven dollars because it's damaged. But they don't know the difference of key issue and key cover. This X Men issue that I'm talking about was a key cover. Beautiful book. I have, I sent D W yeah, and image, Eric yeah, the book picture. Yeah, the image isn't that great. Okay. Yeah, I I, I had some bla I didn't like I said I didn't rebag him yet or nothing. I just took a quick quick picture and send it up there um just yeah be on when, well, when you're out hunting like uh, another key cover would be another key cover would be um i don't remember the exact issue number but in secret wars it's the dr doom cover that was my very first comic book i ever bought off the off the spinner rack was the doctor number doom 11 cover on, on secret wars number 11 that cover is one of my top 10 covers. I have one of my top 10 favorites. That cover right there was so done. Uh, well, I believe that was Zach. And that mm -hmm. was so beautifully done. It was unreal. It was unreal. I thought it was amazing. Mike Zach did the great. all did the covers and art for all of the Secret Wars. Yep. And I yep. would say another key cover for the Secret Wars was issue number four, which is one of my favorite issue. And we brought this up before, was when the yeah. Hulk is holding up the mountain to not crush yeah, Team yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Iconic yep. cover. Iconic oh cover. Right, and, and there's nothing to that cover. All it is is the entire you know, half of the Marvel Universe beating the crap and the Hulk sitting there holding a 40-ton mountain. You know, there it is, right there. That is what you call a key cover. I found that at a flea market. Uh, I believe it was 50 cents. That's an icon. I mean, look at that. A Jim Lee cover, Captain America, so beautifully drawing. And that is a sought after comic just because of that cover. Look at that. that, that that's beautiful. Secret that's Wars beautiful. is not Secret Wars 11, it's Secret Wars 10. Secret Wars 10. Okay, I knew it was yeah. one issue off. Now, yeah. that's the one where Doctor Doom is all bloodied up, and or is it when him without the mask? I know there's two different. Nope, that's the one with him all. I think it's. Uh... He's fighting he in that issue, he's fighting the Beyonder at that point. So all right, yeah. So he's all like messed up and on one yeah, knee. All his okay. armor's yeah. all yeah, his armor's all yeah. busted up. Uh, you know, um, I want to give a quick him. shout out yeah, uh, before we um that was issue three, Rob, I believe. Uh when Spider Man uh, uh, the X Men. I think yes, that was that issue one, three. If if there's ever a Secret Wars movie, that scene better be, it, yeah. that oh, scene yeah. better be in there. That scene better be in there. Better be I, do, I do want to give give a quick shout out to Little Giants Comic Con coming up this weekend. Um, go, a lot of my friends are going to be out there. A lot of art, great artists, Jay Kennedy, Ian Chase Nichols. Yeah, that's the comic I was talking about. Um, uh, Ron, Ron Leary Jr. Ron Leary Jr. is also going to be this weekend. He's going to doing some kind of he's out in Texas and doing something. Uh, for an auction, so keep an eye on Ron Leary Jr.'s Facebook page. He's doing some kind of special auction. I told him I'll give him a quick shout out, so I wanted to do that. Nice. And um, 
Cody um, at the last uh, Comic Con in, in I think it was in Boston. Um, I was there not as a con. I was there as a guest, but not as a guest of a con. Uh, uh, not Angry Geeks. You were and, a customer. Um, <laughs> no, actually, I was a guest, but not oh. as the Angry Geeks. Oh, gotcha. Um, I was a vend- a guest of a vendor, gotcha. and um, I was like a booth babe. Um, <clears throat> little giant. I, I know it was weird. Uh, little giants <laughs> who's putting on this comic book next year. I want to give them a shout out because they sold my son Cody the entire every issue, not reader copies either. The entire first printing, mind you, of the Secret Wars. Oh, nice. Every issue for a hundred bucks. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that and awesome. I, I mean, so I am forever grateful for Jason. And Celeste for doing that for for my kid. I mean, they. I have they, my they I have dope. my original off the spinner rack series. The only one I'm yeah, missing and is, is the the Spider Man uh, issue number eight. It's the only number one eight. I'm number eight. Nope. Cody got all of them, and they said because of your dad for we'll we'll sell you this for a hundred bucks. And I was like, that's oh, awesome. Jay. I said, come on, guys. But now no, I had to give now them a shout-out. That's a speculated out. series right there because that's been in talks for a while now. Now that Marvel's got all their characters back underneath the underneath the house of the mouse, they could do just about whatever they wanted at this point. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Anyway. But that has to be animated. They can't do it live, actually. It has to be animated. Hmm, I don't know it, It'll be that. better. It would be better animated. If they did it right with good artists, they, they it, you know, I mean, they tried they to do already the secret. Did, they already I, did I, it animated. We're running out of it. time. I, and during the Spider-Man animated series uh, on Fox, yeah, um, but it it was it, it 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 wasn't a Secret Wars, but it was a Secret, but it wasn't a Secret Wars. I know, but I, know. I, I don't know. It, it was it, I think animated hour long episodes on Disney Plus animated good would be perfect. Anyway, I know we're running out of time and I got to go. I got to go eat some dinner. Right. But on that, on, on that note, yeah. we don't want it. We don't want we don't want Lewis to pass out and his sugar blood sugar to go dropping. And uh, so before we go, I want to say thank you to our uh, advertisers and sponsors as well. Uh, obviously, Body Armor, drinkbodyarmor.com. Visit them for a location near you. Alternate Universe. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, we'll give you some more links and where to go for them. Oh, you know what? We, you know what we can do with that? We can do this. We can, we'll give uh, Mr. Yako a plug here while we do the other sponsors. Where are you? There you are. There you are. Alternate Universe Comic Books and Collectibles. Open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 7, Sunday, 12 to 5. Facebook.com, Alternate Universe, and also at Alternate Universe ECT. Uh, check them out uh, for all your needs. And like I said, if you can't find something, even at, even if you have a local shop, which we love, you want to support your local shops, we're uh, most definitely. But there's something you can't find locally, give Eric a call. He definitely will help you out. Tell him uh, DW or, or Lewis sent you, and he'll definitely take care of you. Also, a thank you to uh, Hasbro, uh, the Shirt Factory. Visit the shirtfactorygf.com, uh, Chase Sports Complex, and lastly, our returning advertiser and good friends, Adventure Family Fun Center. They are open now. Uh, they are open now. Because I have it up here. They are open now. Uh, Fridays from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. But they, you need reservations still because they want it. They only have a certain amount of people they can have. You have to have masks on at all times unless you're sitting, eating, or in the go-karts. God forbid. We, we No masks on go-karts. You're going too fast. You don't need a mask. And then I know. Thank you so much for joining us on the Friday Night Edition. I will see you next Tuesday. Lewis, uh, when are you popping on again? Mondays, see right? <laughs> see, yes. Yeah, we will be on Monday with that Wonder Woman, Jamie Dolan. What the very special guest. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about this, and this is going to be NC-17. We have the rock and roll band, the Lords of Acid. That's right, live oh, with Jamie nice. and I. The signed rock band. They reached out to us. They asked us. They said, hey, we want to be Angry Geeks approved. We want to be on your show. I'm like, really? That's right. You can find their music on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, all that. Now, this is not going to be for this. Imagine this as a live. Imagine this as the live Angry Geek show after dark at all your ARE events. I'm not going to be held responsible for this. So, yeah, anything can happen this Monday night. The Lords of Asset live on the Angry Geek Show this Monday with Jamie and I. 
dig it. Oh, you don't see that every day. <laughs> no, <Thanks>. you won't. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Like I said, I'll see you next Tuesday. Everybody have a great evening. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, we'll see you. Like I said, we'll see you next Tuesday. I don't know why I keep saying that. Do you know why I keep saying that? <laughs> I don't know, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everybody have a great weekend. This has been an Earplug Podcast presentation found on EarplugPodcast.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever your favorite podcasts are found.